Let's try this out here. And I feel like we are. Dun, dun, dun. Got feedback. All right. Let's see. If anybody can see us that we're live, let us know. I got crazy weird mic feedback. Do you got it or no? No, I, there's a little bit of clicking, but no. Yeah. Not. Okay. All right. Well, let's check it out here. I feel like we are, but it says something went wrong. Hmm. I know. Not optimal. No. Oh, wait. I feel like you're okay. We're good. Someone says yes. We're good. <laughs> Technology. I can't wait. To <laughs> This is awesome. Well, thanks everybody guys for tuning in tonight, taking some time out of your Friday. I'm super excited to introduce Wendy. I have to be honest, like I was introduced to you during the um, virtual motorcycle, like the women's conference meetup. What was it? March? I think it was the first one, right? Yeah. Okay. So I was an attendee then, and I um, tuned into one of your um, one of your spots, and so that was the first time I was introduced to you. And like I, you like opened up a whole different door that I had no idea even existed when I first started fully riding this year. That I didn't know it was even like capacity to do. So once I dug into it, I was like, I need. I need to learn more about long distance riding. And then I found out like your story and like what you have done. And so you have been my inspiration and you are the like kind of the bouncing off point to start my um, iron butt on my Sportster this year. So thank you for that. And now I'm completely obsessed with anything long distance riding. So I'm so excited to have you on tonight. <laughs> That's awesome. See, mission <laughs> accomplished. We yes. bring yes. new people into the fold. <laughs> That's awesome. So for those that may not know too much about you, can you give a little bit of a rundown um, who you are, where you're from, all of that kind of should be all to start off with. So my name is Wendy Crockett uh, from California originally. I've lived all over the place, but um, I am a multiple factory certified motorcycle mechanic. We had a shop in Kernville, California for about 10 years. And <laughs> Um, I do long distance endurance riding. So um, the reason I would have been in, in the last seminar is I'm the first woman to have won the Iron Butt Rally, which is um, uh, the, the tagline is 11 days, 11,000 miles. Uh, I did about 13,000 miles in 11 days. And that was actually, I looked it up the other day when you sent the link, it was actually not my longest Iron Butt really? Rally. Really? That, but it was like my third longest <laughs> Crap, and but, so you've been doing iron butt rallies at least as from what i'm what i saw since when two i saw 2009 has that been the case or yeah 2009 was my first um my first iron butt rally and the only one i missed was the year after my daughter was born so um i've done five five rallies Crap. So what, I guess, to kind of roll back a little bit, what got you started in motorcycling? Is it some, like, can you share a little bit more on that side? Yeah, like nobody in my family really rode. It wasn't, you know, a lot of a lot of people grow up in, you know, families with motorcycles and, and um, just kind of grow from there. But sure. in my family, it was uh, over my dead body is what my parents told me. So immediately, of course, I move out and start collecting. <laughs> motorcycles but it's something that just it just always spoke to me yeah. like there was just some sort of allure that i knew i i must had explore to. you had yeah. to so what was the transition then from riding to being a mechanic how did that come about um so i started riding and i was um on course to um become a doctor i was uh, you know on on course for for medical school and um, I had done kind of a magnet program in high school where I started working in the hospital when I was about 14 and talking to a lot of the doctors and very kind of disillusioned with our insurance systems and the amount of patient care they were giving, I really started kind of second guessing, is this what I want to be doing? And, you know, parallel to that, 
I was writing and started expanding my writing. I was really loving it. And I was um, saying, you know, if life were different, if I wasn't so fully committed to this track in my life, I would love to be a motorcycle mechanic, right? I would love to just play with motorcycles all day long. Absolutely. And, um, but, you know, I have, I have bills to pay and I've, I'm, you know, committed to school. So when I'm struggling with this decision, I, I decide to, I'm, I'm, I go and register for my next semester at college, pull out of the, the parking lot of the college and a lady ran a stop sign and wiped me out. And I, well, you know, broke my pelvis and was in a wheelchair for a long time. And I couldn't go back to school and I couldn't go to work and I couldn't pay my bills. And I was like, well, that was like this giant slate cleaner. Like now life is different. Now uh -huh. I will play with motorcycles all day. <laughs> so, you know, it was like most people are like, well, that's a terrible idea. That was not supposed to be your takeaway. But what I took from that is life is short, man. Let's, uh, you know, pursue our passions. I don't want to feel like I got stuck in that rut. And just because I had laid out this script for myself that I, I couldn't change course when I found this, this other passion. So that's awesome. And so you've been doing that for how many years now? 21 years. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> so you're out in California. I know you had an issue. You had a shop of your own as well in Sturgis, right? Or like South Dakota area, right? No, I, I worked for another uh, oh, shop. Okay. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Yep. And so leading into that, then how did you transition or start doing long distance riding? Like you were a mechanic at that point in time too, right? Or how did that, align? that, that also was kind of parallel. So, you know, when I started writing, not coming from a writing family or anything like that, um, you just, you end up just kind of with your group of random friends that you align with. So we had like dirt bike guys and Harley guys and, and the, you know, crotch rocket guys, and you're just kind of all buddies. But um, I, I found that, you know, you're kind of always looking for permission. Like I, you know, but, I think it would be fun. Let's go a little farther. Like let's go or something on the bikes. Um, but with the, you know, such a, such a mishmash of friends, then I, I moved on to motorcycle mechanics Institute and found like several more like-minded friends where we're like, let's go see how many States we can hit in a weekend before we have to go to school on Monday. Um, and from there, I just kind of found, I just really like being on my bike. I don't really need, to go to some place. I'm perfectly happy just being on the bike and riding on the bike until I have to come home and have some sort of other obligation. My dogs need to be fed or something. <laughs> That's my cutoff. I don't, I don't need a particular um, destination in mind. So with that, you know, that it really starts kind of notching down the number of friends that are like, yeah, that's a great idea. And more people are like, you're nuts, but have fun. <laughs> so <laughs> I like, I wish I wasn't like, I wish I was aligned in school with you at the same time. Like I would totally have done something along that lines. If I, <laughs> I would have started sooner, but I didn't until um, a few pretty much last year and we got our license about eight years ago. But even then that was after school entirely and we had most other obligations. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's such a niche um, kind of hobby that even I was doing that type of writing for a really long time before I found the Iron Butt Association, before I realized that there were other people out there that did this. I thought I had just kind of out crazied all of my buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and then you found that girl. <laughs> right. And then I found my my niche in the world. Heck yes. So what propelled you to like start your first or apply to do that first rally? Like how did that come about for your sake? So I had done um, a number of certified rides okay. and um, you know, my my first certified ride was a coast to coast bundled together with a saddle sore because I'm not really a start small kind of person. <laughs> You're going so, all in. <laughs> That's awesome. I learned about um, the Iron Butt Rally and and the other, um, you know, smaller rallies. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of one of those things where it's like, it really appeals to me. Like I, I love puzzles. I, it's just kind of the way my mind is oriented. Um, I, I really like that type of thing. And then to combine that with riding, like it became this bucket list 
type item for me. And I was like, well, what if, what if I ride a shorter rally? And I'm like, well, that was boring. And then I like kind of have to scratch that off my bucket list without accomplishing it. And I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to go all out and I'm either going to love it or I'm going to hate it, but I'm going to check that off my list. And, you know, I loved it. How I, did it go for you that first one? Um, I finished in, I want to say in the, in the, high 20s low 30s that was okay. a i finished with a silver medal so it was you know third of the way down the pack sure. but for you know for a first endeavor i was quite pleased to even finish Thank so you. can you explain to the viewers that maybe they're not from as familiar with the iron Brett rally i know i'm like starting to get a little bit more into it and learning about it can you kind of explain what that entails from the rally perspective? Yeah, so it is it is basically like a North American wide scavenger hunt. So, but not in, not in the sense like um, you need to go find a pink Christmas tree. It's like you need to go to this specific place and do this specific thing or take a picture of this specific thing or buy something or take a tour or, you know, there's, there's something you need to accomplish and document in order to get points. Okay. So there is, um, you know, how, how they kind of describe it is, think of this like a buffet. We will give you 300, 400, 500 potential bonus points. You can't eat it all, you'll get sick. You mm -hmm. have to go through there and determine- um, Which are you, Right, are, are you out to win? Are you out to place really well? Or are you out to have fun? So you can go through and decide whether you want to go see these beautiful things or go do these interesting things or do this because it has a lot of points or um, that type of thing. So, um, so it's kind of like a gamble of like what you want, what's going to motivate you to enjoy you to ride, but then also gain you the points to. Exactly right. And then we have checkpoint windows. So you have to make sure that all your timing lines up so you don't miss a checkpoint window. Um, okay. That's the most critical thing because you can have all the points in the world, but if you miss a checkpoint window, you're out. So it's, it really is, it's not a matter of speed. And I didn't do the most miles in the rally that I won. The guy who most wide miles came in like 26. Oh, wow. But, um, so it's, it's not a matter of brute force. It's a matter of working that puzzle. So that's, that's what makes it, there's, right. you know, there's, there are a lot of really, really good riders out there. There was a lot of really good riders last year, but you just, you have, you find that fine balance of good luck and yeah. being able to work that puzzle. So. That's crazy. So with that, I know you have this last, like go around, I kind of want to back up just a smidge too. You took some time off because you had your daughter too. Mm -hmm. So how did like that come about as far as like building a family, but still wanting to, you know, create, like create this business of mechanic and long distance riding. How did that play out smoothly? Or is that a decision that you guys had to kind of, what was that like for you? I suppose. No, she was, a, she was a, a nine year project. So <laughs> okay. it was, you know, she, we were really excited to, uh, you know, yeah. have her come on board. And, uh, you know, when, when I found out I was expecting, we built a nursery onto the shop and she was at the shop with me every day. And it was <laughs> like, it was really cool. We had, uh, you know, quite a spectrum of customers, but we had some like burly old one percenter, like you would cross the street to not Doesn't be on the road with them, that would come into the shop and they're like, don't get up, we're here to see the baby. And then they would go snuggle and make baby noise. This is a test. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. So she's been around it literally since I have a picture of her at like four days old in the shop. Wow. So, yeah. So, so how did you juggle the long distance riding and all that being a new mom? Like, was that hard to do? How did so you find? I, um, so she was born in 2014. Okay. The rally was 2015, which is mm -hmm. one that I passed. So it was actually 2017. She was three years old. Okay. Um, so fairly self-sufficient at that point, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Between her and my husband, they had things handled uh, <laughs> by the time to be she able to tackle it. Yeah. So. so 
with that being a new mom and how did you, like is there certain endurances that you have to kind of keep up with or like i'm trying to figure out process wise of what keeps your stamina up to be able to do that how did you juggle that time it then there was not a lot of like off time practice and uh, like bike wise. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, the, the first several years after she was born, it was really minimal time, you know, spent doing long distance rally stuff. And last year, um, yeah, or 2019, yeah. before the Iron Bot rally. So the Iron Bot rally is in June and the entire year up until the rally, I had only ridden like 80 miles that year or something like that. I just, I hadn't had time and the weather in South Dakota had, you know, not been conducive to mm -hmm. long rides and, <clears throat> but um, I do a lot of um, really like intense hiking. <clears throat> so even, even now um, I'll throw her in a heavy pack and we'll oh go my gosh. <laughs> hike to the top of a mountain. So that type of stuff is equally as important, you know, keeping your core strength up and, sure. and um, you know, keeping yourself, physically in shape is just as important as time spent in the saddle um, in terms of being able to do that. You know, like not you, to work out in itself with her. I'm sure like she's not as light as she was when she was a newborn or a one-year-old, but so. <laughs> like I, I joke, I'm like, eventually she's going to outgrow this backpack and I'm going to have to like rig up some 60 pound backpack that pulls my hair and tells fart jokes. And <laughs> <laughs> so, that's fantastic. It is. It's you know. It's it's fun to spend that time with her, and she enjoys it, and it's a great workout to do it. So, how did you? Because I know your most recent adventure for 2020 kind of went a little sideways with everything going on. But how did you? Can you kind of explain what you had planned for? I want to say this last year now because it's 2021. Yeah. But how did that come about, and what was your plan? Can you share that with the viewers that are on here? So we had um, planned, um, my husband and I had planned, we have a, a sidecar rig mm -hmm. and we planned on riding down to South America and spending a year um, riding around South America. So that's why we closed our shop and, um, you know, went and worked for the other shop for a bit as we sure. you know, kind of pared our life down. And um, so we, we took off for the ride in um, October of 2019. Okay. And on our way out of the country, got the call that my mom, who's been on the kidney transplant list for quite some time, found a donor who was another Iron Butt Rally veteran. No turned way. Out, yeah, really? Out, perfect match. Yeah. So we yeah. delayed the trip to stay and take care of her and get her through that process. Um, and there's a, um, she had the, um, the uh, transplant in December and it's a three month um, recuperation period of really heavy duty doctor's appointments and things like that. So we're like, we get to March and we're like, great. Love you, mom. See ya. And we get to Mexico and the pandemic hits. So. <laughs> and that's kind of where you're at right now, or what's the plans yeah. for that adventure for yourself? Yeah. So, you know, we, we stopped in with friends down here and they said, stay as long as you need. And I don't think any of us envisioned that being your <laughs> home base for a little bit. <laughs> right. But it's, you know, it's great here. And, you know, my daughter calls uh, our host her spare mom. And um, we've got plenty of room. And, and you know, when, when things are good, we do have space to explore new things. And she can be exposed to different cultures. And um, so, you know, it is that. Not quite the scope that we had envisioned, but still a lot You're of You're still giving her, like, an incredible life. Like, holy crap just from the small amount that she's been alive so far she's got quite the story to tell for him yeah. <laughs> how did i guess from her side how did you transition her to get to that point where you guys felt comfortable to go from south dakota all the way down to south america pretty much like how did that happen we had, um, we'd actually been looking for a sidecar rig for a good while before my daughter was born, just for the dogs, because nice. we thought it would be fun, yes. and just never had the right opportunity pop up. And when my daughter was four months old, um, we had, we came across this rig, okay. and um, it was just perfect. So she's been riding in it since she was four months old. 
Um, so she's she's perfectly happy. She very quickly learned that when she throws toys off the edge, they're gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's always been like a very contented traveler. She's, okay. she's really happy. I mean, whether really whether it's in the car or the, the sidecar, um, she's she's perfectly happy to get in and go. She's very adaptable. And I think part of that is being at the shop too. Like nothing really phases her. Yep. And any, any kinds of talking to anybody and, you know, is, is second nature for her. So how long does she go for like, like, how do you plan the routes with her? That's what I'm so, curious on. For uh, a reasonable day, like on the outside for her is, you know, maybe three to 500 miles, depending on the road sure. conditions. You know, if we're, if we're really trying to make headway, um, we could do, you know, 500 miles on the highway and that's, that's about maxed out, but we'd push it yeah. stop and, um, you know, again, things are so different with the pandemic, but we'd stop and do parks or, you know, hit a hotel with a, you know, water slide or that type of thing. Um, so she can run around and, get, and hit children's museums when we're passing through places. Um, they need that time. I've drove with the two kiddos down from Wisconsin to Tennessee and even farther. And there's a certain max that they hit that they can no longer stay in the car seat for so long and they just need to get out and yep. stretch their lives. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. But how does like how do you keep her entertained? That's what I'm curious. Her, like, so, or how does she keep herself entertained for when you're out? I, she has, you know, books and, and that type of thing. She has a yeah. tablet, but we try to keep that to um, <laughs> a minimum. Um, we, I put a, a Senna on her helmet, which was great for, you know, the first couple of days until she was like, <laughs> ah, ma, ma, cow, ma. And then all of a sudden, her Senna broke. Oh no. And we just had to wait and stop. stop later. <laughs> Or else she's going to talk your ear off the entire time. <laughs> you probably go from these like extreme like polars, like you're just serene and just by yourself doing these iron butt rallies. And then you have your daughter just talking your ear off. But I'm sure both are just equally as like, so, like I don't know what the word for it is, but just. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very much a solitary writer. So I enjoy sharing it with her, but not actively in real time. I just saw a dog going poop. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainment, though, I'm sure is. Uh, but I also gave her, I have um, for my, my rally camera is a Olympus Tough. So it's, you know, waterproof and smash proof, freeze oh, proof, nice. all of that stuff. Yep. So I, I let her have that in the sidecar so she can take pictures of the cows and the dogs pooping and whatever else catches her <laughs> eye. And um, she actually has taken some really, really cool stuff because, you yes. know, when you're riding and you're focused on going down the road. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really neat to see what she sees uh, from the sidecar. So that's cool. Yeah. Like sooner or later, you're probably going to get her a GoPro and she'll be into the vlogging part and she'll, she can capture your adventures from the sidecar. That would be, yeah. awesome. <laughs> I'd love to hear it from her side. I know, I'm not sure if you're familiar with dad and mad they're out in the UK area, but he has a daughter probably around the same age as yours too. Just got her on a bike herself, but she's like instantly started the moto vlogging and just talking in her <laughs> helmet. And so just with the, like how you described her and her Senna, I would love to get like, just to listen to her feedback on the, <laughs> on the rides. That would be entertaining. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. We all have to set her up. That'll definitely keep her entertained. You got it. That's <laughs> So what are your big plans if you have any for the next year? I know with everything going on right now, it's kind of hit or miss, but what's, what's yeah. the big ones for your sake for next year? So we, I, you know, just waiting to see what rallies are going to be going on and keeping my fingers crossed and waiting for international borders to open. I have some, uh, you know, rides I would like to do in other countries that it's not prudent right now to, mm -hmm. You know, we we were very very lucky in the big scheme of things that we didn't end up like in Peru or someplace when everything sure. started locking down um, because a lot of overlanders there. It's like lockdown starts in an hour. I don't care where you are. I don't care if you have food. I don't care if you have a place to stay. 
you are we stay in where you're at so wow as far as that goes you know i'm i'm hesitant to um shake up a good thing that we've got going so i'm just i'm kind of sitting and waiting um until the world writes itself mm -hmm. we can continue having adventures so what do you see for her and for you and like for his, like your husband like what's the kind of goal for your moto adventures like is there a certain list or bucket list that you want to check off that you've been wanting to do or to experience together what's on that there's there's not really and and just that's i think that's part of why i, I enjoy um like the iron butt rally type riding so much is for me it's, uh for me it's not i don't need a particular destination and it's kind of the same with my daughter there's not like very specific things I want to take her to to see. Otherwise, I could put her in a van and very comfortably take her to see the thing. But I want her to experience what life is being part of this community, what it's like when we stop to help people and other people stop to help us and people are gravitating towards her because seeing a kid in a sidecar, seeing a, a sidecar in Mexico, period, is really, really unique. And then... Um, you know, seeing seeing a little kid in the sidecar, it just brings everybody's happiness out. So those are the things that I want her to experience as we travel. So okay. um, it's more of the adventure that you guys are going to take more than right. it. So yeah, love. that's fantastic. It's a good way to look at riding because there are so many people that are just set on certain landmarks or locations, but then you get to those locations and they are what they are, and maybe they weren't up to the like expectations that you were thinking and then it's on to the next for me like i have th had these certain things this year that i wanted to go and see and do but then i like i was like okay well now i've got a long laundry list of other things that i just i want to experience i want to keep doing and so from your end it's nice to kind of take that step back and just look at it from you enjoy the motorcycle like you enjoy riding you enjoy motorcycling the destination is always just the plus of where we are going. Right. That's cool. It's fantastic. I want to kind of let the viewers that are in the chat, I know we're trying to catch up on the sidebar here, but if there's any questions that you guys have for Wendy, shout them out and we can kind of do a little um, question answer from your guys' perspective. But... Uh, I'm just so, I, you're kind of my inspiration for starting my Saddle Sore 1000 and getting into this long distance endurance riding. And it's not an easy feat. And I can't imagine what it's like with like trying to put kids into the mix and still being able to tackle it and come out on like the highest, still, like the highest point for the rallies too. So I'm excited to see where it goes from, from your end of it because it, it can only go farther up, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, it, that was something else I was going to mention is, um, you know, you did your saddle sore on the Sportster, right? Mm -hmm. And so many people think, oh, this is something that might be interesting. I might look, like try to do it, but I'd need to get a different bike. My bike just isn't up to it. And it's like, if you are comfortable on your bike and it's mechanically sound, that's the best bike to do your first saddle sore on. Like, yeah. You know, because people have done, I mean, literally everything from from little bitty scooters up to, you know, gold wings and vintage bikes and everything in between. In I rallies think, as well, or how does that? Oh, work? yeah, yeah. In in rallies, um, there's, we had a guy that did one on a, a Honda Helix scooter. Now, since he did that, they've put some um, some performance minimums in place. But there's guys that have done the Iron Bot Rally on like um, Ninja 250s and um, KLR 650s. So things that a lot of people are like, oh, that's not appropriate for a saddle sore. Get out and do it. See if you like it. I mean, you don't you don't need anything special. You don't need any special equipment. You, just, you need the two wheels to get right. You. Exactly. As long as you're happy on, in I, that saddle, go for it. I've found that and like the obsession keeps growing stronger for me. And so I kind of take it the same way that you've approached it. And we talked about, I think this before the live started, but like um, you just went out and did it. You completed your first rally and 
it was one thing you just had to do for my sake. You can start small or you can go all in and go up um, to what you envisioned too. So yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So I've got a question from Toby here. Um, what's the pictures behind you? Uh, this is um, the, uh, my host's office here. Uh, he is actually the president of the Iron Butt Association Mexico, um, Marco Almaraz. And so this is a collection of people that have visited uh, IBA Mexico headquarters and um, the the various rides and logos and things. So it's all throughout like each country has its own or how does that work? It, for it, IBA? it kind of varies. Not every country has their own, but there is... Um, like uh, areas. UK's got one and um, Germany, Australia, uh, Brazil. Um, and then some of, like some of the other countries that don't have their own specific um, uh, chapter for, for lack of a better word, um, they can still do rise. They just are certified through the main Iron Butt Association in the US. Got it, got it. <laughs> Chris says it's, it is impossible to ride. <laughs> <laughs> says, says Chris, how many I think Chris has done I don't. Iron Butt Rallies on his uh, Sportsters. So. That's what I feel like. So. <laughs> you know? I had to share that one for that day. Awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I don't think I saw any other ones. I know we have a slight delay as far as comments go. So if they come in through, I'm sorry, but I don't want to keep you too much longer tonight because I could literally talk your ear off for the next like four hours. We always have like conversations about this and I appreciate kind of you being that shoulder to lean on as far as not necessarily just like female riders, but newer riders that are getting into the like long distance endurance riding. I appreciate from your standpoint, the knowledge, and just the experiment experiences that you're showcasing that you're doing for. Us. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I'm I'm always more than happy to help. So, um, you know, I I love this. It speaks to me, and so any any time I can give somebody a a pointer or point them in the right direction, I'm I'm more than happy to do so. Add more to that one percenters of. <laughs> That's like Toby's asking. So, so many countries have an IBA, but they answer to the U.S. Right. It just okay. yeah. The 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 headquarters of Iron Butt Association is in the U.S. So even um, uh, like certain things that happen down here in Mexico are kind of um, certified autonomously, and certain things go through. Um, the Iron Butt Association in the U.S. and like Australia has their own Iron Butt Australia, but all of their certifications go through the Still U.S. as well. Through. So yeah, okay, that's, that's crazy. Um, Moto Carry has one too. What's a roadblock you wish you knew about in advance when you started doing long distance riding? Hmm, that's a it's a that's tough a question. One. And I yeah, I don't know. I mean, other than kind of the the usual life is, uh, you know, makes it difficult to get that kind of time together to do that. Not everybody wants to spend their vacation time doing that. Sure. But um, I would say something that um, was, is something that everybody just kind of has to experience for themselves if they want to do long distance riding um, is figuring out like your sleep rhythms Mm -hmm. is a big one because there's really no good way to um, kind of recreate that in real life. You know, the what you go through when you are actively working this puzzle or you're out there on the road, um, you just kind of have to get out there and do it. But part of what um, it makes it when you are extremely fatigued, one of the symptoms is you have difficulty assessing your own fatigue level, right? So um, it's it's one of those very careful balancing acts to figure out exactly what works for you, what you have to do to be safe. You know, so that that was something for me that that really took some so a little bit of trial and error to say, okay, that's not how I want to handle that next time and figure out exactly your rhythm, right. Where I needed to be, to be safe. Um, 
out on the road. So that's cool. Good question, Carrie. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you. I don't see any other questions in here, but if there are, leave them in the comments below in the um, YouTube description. And I've got all of the links to your accounts on, on there as well. So your website, you've got Instagram and a Facebook account for your family's um, third wheel adventures. So I've got those on there if anybody wants to take a peek um, at those stuff that you have done and you are sharing. But thank you so cool. much for being on here. Like when I started this uh, Mo Moto Mom live channel, you were the one that I was like, okay, I need to get you on here <laughs> to like, one, to pick your brain selfishly, of course, and two, just to showcase to all of these um, viewers, especially women writers out there, that you can still do what you've envisioned doing and still raise a family. So thank you so much. for Cool. Thank you for the invite. Awesome. Thanks, guys, so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And Wendy, thanks again. So. Bye.